remember being very upset with people who who didn't want me to pursue a relationship with him out of fear because I've had guys whose families question them dating me because I'm blind. Hello, welcome to another story time in my bedroom. You guys have been loving my story times lately, which is great. Oh no, Gal was being all cute and snuggly. Now I just have his weird blanket and part of his bed up here. <sighs> Ruined the whole vibe, Gal. All right, so you guys have been loving my story times, which I'm very happy about because I'm stuck, you know, chilling in my apartment and having to make up content while I'm stuck inside. So stories are kind of the easiest thing. I love telling you guys about my life. There is honestly so much I haven't told you guys. It's not because I don't want to, it's just because there is so much that has happened in my life and I have so many crazy stories and I don't just want to make my channel a story time channel because there's so much other content I want to make. So story times, I have like this whole list of stories I want to tell and they kind of just get put on the back burner and then I'm like, oh, one day I'll write another book and I'll tell it then. And I don't know, like you guys are always like, tell me about winning Miss Teen Canada or tell me about like touring with A-list celebrities like Macklemore and Demi Lovato or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, one day I'll get to it someday. <laughs> but today is not that day. I'm not telling you about Miss Teen Canada. I'm not telling you about working with Demi Lovato. Today, you see it in the title, I am telling you about the time I dated somebody who was HIV positive. And this is something that, you know, when you are talking with a new guy and you're talking about like past experiences and relationships, or when you're talking with friends about like, oh, this guy I once dated. And whenever this Part of my dating history comes up, people are always very like, oh my god, wow. Like it's a very confronting thing for people when they hear HIV positive or AIDS. And there is a separation, there is a difference between having full-blown AIDS and being HIV positive. And that is something that a lot of people aren't aware of. And I admit, I was 18, I'm 26, I was 18 when I dated this guy. We're gonna call him Michael to keep him anonymous. That is not his name. But when I dated Michael, I was 18. And when I met him, I was ignorant about HIV and AIDS. And in choosing to date him, I made a really big effort to educate myself and I think there's still a lot of stigma and there's still a lot of stereotypes around people living HIV positive and so I wanted to make this video to kind of break maybe some of those stereotypes to educate and this was eight years ago I haven't retained quite all of the information that I knew back then so I'm gonna link a lot of information resources and articles about HIV and AIDS down below and I really encourage you guys to check it out to read to learn to educate yourself because you know, this is something that in 2020 is, it exists, it's in, in our world, it's, you know, you never know when you're gonna fall for somebody who also happens to be HIV positive or a partner gets diagnosed with AIDS. So I think it's important to just be aware. And unfortunately, it's something that when we get taught in school, when we have sex education, if we even have proper sex health education, this isn't something that I think gets discussed enough or enough proper information is shared about. So that's why I'm here to talk about it today. Hello, Molly from the future here popping in. It's not really from the future. It's the exact same day I stopped filming three minutes ago, but I wanted to mention, I'm also going to link down below a girl that I worked with named Ashley Rose, and she was also born HIV positive and is an HIV activist and does a lot of interesting content. So I'm going to link her below in case you want to follow anybody kind of in the social media world who's doing awareness and education around HIV and AIDS. Check her out. I've wanted to talk about it for a long time, but it's Michael's story too. It's not just my story. And I want to respect him. And I would never want to hurt him by sharing this. So I'm gonna try to keep him as anonymous as possible and therefore keeping this as vague as possible with still being able to share the story. I have a lot of respect for Michael. He is a very talented person and I, I don't know, you know, where he's at in life at this point with his journey, but I wish him all the best and I hope he's doing well. So let's just get into it. When I was 18 years old, I traveled to a state. Again, I'm gonna keep it very vague so as to internet sleuths cannot like 
do the little research and, and deep dive into this, but I traveled to the States. I'm originally from Toronto, Canada. I was living in Toronto at the time and I traveled to spend one week in the US for a leadership program. I had just graduated high school in June. It was now July and I was taking part in a leadership conference. I then went on to work for two summers at this conference. It's an incredible conference. I wish I could tell you guys more about it without telling you guys about it, but I can't. So I'm just gonna say it was a great experience to volunteer there for two summers. And it was a great experience to attend my first year as a participant. And that is where I met Michael. And it was midway through the week that we really bonded. There was a talent show and he was an incredible acrobat, just like so incredibly talented at tumbling, gymnastics, acrobatics, so talented. And we were both rehearsing for the talent show. I was singing, honestly, I'm not that great a singer. I'm fine, you know, like nobody's like, wow, Molly and Adele are really similar. Like, no, it's not. We're not there yet, you know, and we never will be, but it's fine. So I was singing just because I love singing and he came over and he was petting my guide dog Gypsy at the time and we got chatting and I had heard of him before because my mentor had worked with him and known him for many, many, many years. So she had kind of told me about Michael, but I hadn't connected the dots right away. And we were sitting there and we were chatting and as he was telling me about himself, I was like, oh, this is Michael. Like, this is the Michael that my mentor has told me about over the years. And we instantly connected. Like, we just instantly had chemistry. We got on really well. We had interesting conversation. And he didn't tell me right away that he was HIV positive. But because I had heard of Michael and connected those dots, I knew. And I didn't feel like it was my place to ask or mention it. It didn't really matter to me. At the time, I didn't realize we were gonna end up dating for a bit. So it didn't matter to me. I didn't feel like it was my place be like, so I heard you're HIV positive. And so I just, you know, went about building a friendship with him over the next few days. We became closer and closer. We were flirting and I can't remember how it came up. I think we were talking about kids. And if you guys watch my videos frequently, you know, I'm somebody who always kind of says like, I'm not sure I really want kids. I'm open to it. I'm not like there's a hard red line, no. But if I had to like look into my future with a crystal ball and decide if I was having kids or not, I would say no. And so I think we were talking about that and I was like, yeah, I don't really Really want kids and he brought up not really wanting kids anyways the conversation of him having HIV just came up we started talking about it and because I had already known of him I knew that he was born HIV positive his mother had contracted HIV and did not know because from the research that I've done symptoms of being HIV positive or having full-blown AIDS can stay dormant in your body for up to 10 years, which is why it is so important to go get tested frequently if you are sexually active. But this is back in the 90s and early 90s and it stayed dormant in her body for years. She went on to get married to Michael's father to get pregnant and conceive Michael. And it wasn't until she was pregnant that she actually found out that she was HIV positive because the symptoms started to present and in doing blood work and checking on the status of her pregnancy and all of that, they discovered that she was HIV positive and that it was going to be passed on to Michael. So he was born HIV positive and it was very interesting in getting to know him, just the, the stigmas and the stereotypes he faced. He was Caucasian and a lot of people, you know, would make race-based jokes about being HIV positive, which is just so disturbing to me, would make jokes about him being gay. And so being like a straight white male who was still a teenager and being HIV positive was very hard for him because a lot of people would make, yeah, jokes about his race, about his sexuality, about his promiscuity, not realizing that A, you can be born with it and B, he was born with it. So it was something he often felt like he needed to keep a secret from people. And, you know, I really felt for him because hiding who you are, how can you love yourself when you hide so much of yourself away? And I'm not saying that he needed to shout from the rooftops about it, but it was something he struggled with as a part of his identity. And I think at the time in my life, being an 18 year old girl and having gone through a large journey to recovery and self love myself and was, was on the tail end of it, but definitely still on that journey. And having had both really healthy romantic relationships and really unhealthy romantic relationships, it was in a place where I was, I think I was dating people I needed to fix. And I think that's a phase a lot of people go through. You wanna be the fixer, the helper, the guide people. And, and I think, I developed romantic feelings for him through connecting and relating to his self 
internal struggle with who he was. And so after the week was over, we continued to stay in touch through text message. He lived in, in the US, I lived in Canada. We lived about, I wanna say an eight hour drive away from each other. So it wasn't like, like he lived in a state that bordered Canada. So he didn't live too far away from me. We would have phone calls, we would text every day. So we would stay in touch and you know, I just continued to grow to develop feelings for him. Physically, he was my type. He was like on the shorter side. I wanna say he was probably like, definitely no taller than 5'8", probably closer to 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, I'm four foot 10 and a half, so I like shorter guys. He was super fit, banging body, great body. Cause like I said, he was a gymnast. He was a competitive tumbler, so great body, blonde, just my type and so he was physically my type I found him interesting I've always been attracted to people who live very different lives to me and who have very different life experiences because I think it challenges me it creates more interesting conversation so there was a lot that appealed to me about him but obviously you know we lived in different countries and I was still very young so was he so there was challenges that way but we stayed in touch and you know our feelings for each other continued to grow and during that time and considering like the fact that I liked this person, I began to share it with friends and family that, you know, I had met this guy and I really liked him. And whenever I would share the fact that he was HIV positive with people, the reactions were very negative. Just like I said at the beginning of this video, whenever I share now that I dated somebody at one point who was HIV positive, people are really like shocked. And when I would share it with friends and family at the time, they were really shocked and they were really concerned for me. And a lot of that concern came from a lack of, again, a lack of education and a lack of understanding, being concerned that I would contract it through kissing him, which HIV isn't spread through saliva. So things like that. Also, he not understanding the difference between being HIV positive and having AIDS, being HIV positive but being undetectable, which is the state, the status that he was at in his journey because he had been medicated from birth. He was highly monitored by his team to always make sure the virus was under control and if he was growing resistant to medication he would switch so he was undetectable which means it was not transmittable but even then you know condoms things like that again saliva is not you cannot transmit it that way so just things like that so I really made a real effort to educate myself on it so that I was making the right decision for my own self my own health and I could be aware of how I could potentially contract it or not as well as being able to then share that that information with my friends and family and hopefully ease their concerns about the decision that I was making. But I remember being very upset with people who, who didn't want me to pursue a relationship with him out of fear because I've had guys whose families question them dating me because I'm blind. And I've had guys question dating me because I'm blind. So I know how it feels to have a romantic partner or their family choose to not pursue something or be concerned about you pursuing something because of something that I cannot change. And it's really devastating. And at the end of the day, he can control his HIV through medication, but he can't change the fact that he has it and he was born with it. And even if you contract it, you can't control that. Like once you have it, you have it. So it was really hard for me to be like, to be confronted with people's fears for me. And I understood it came out of a place of love and a lack of understanding and education, but it was hard because I was like, you're doing the same thing that would devastate you if his friends and family did to me. And I think for people, they're like, no, it's different, it's different. But to me, it wasn't different, it felt the same. And so I wanted to give him just as much a chance as I would have given him if he did not have HIV. And so I drove down with a friend to the state that he was in for a weekend away. And we met up with another friend from the conference. We met up with Michael and the four of us had a really great weekend. And yeah, we just had a great time. We made out, didn't go any further. I was only 18. You know, I wasn't super active at the time on my sexual journey. So that's all, that's the extent of how it went. I made out with him in front of my friends. I regret that. I'm sorry to my friends if you're watching. That. that was inappropriate. I shouldn't have done that. Heat of the moment. What can I say? I was overcome. But yeah, so that was kind of the extent of it. We had a great weekend. I went home. He continued to talk. And one of the things that he really, really struggled with the most in coming to terms with his diagnosis was the anger he felt towards his mother. And I understand. I have a genetic disease. My blindness was passed down due to faulty genetics from both my mother and father's side. They both had a faulty gene. It came together and boom, Molly's blind. It was very rare. It was 
highly unlikely it would happen, but it did. Didn't happen for my brother, same parents, but for me, you know, the stars aligned and it happened. And I've never held it against my parents. They didn't know. And so it was a conversation we often had of, you know, your mom did not know she had it. And just like she didn't know she was passing it on to you and my parents didn't know they were passing it on to me, like this isn't a choice my parents or your mom would have ever made. And so it was a conversation we had ongoing and I think I really wanted to, to help him love himself because I think loving yourself is, is the most beautiful thing you can feel and is one of the most empowering things you can feel. And I, I just wanted to find a way to help him move forward. And I felt that in order to move forward on his journey to self-acceptance and love, he needed to forgive and to strengthen that relationship with his mother. So that was like an ongoing conversation we had. And I remember after high school, I, I didn't go to college or university. I started touring full-time as a motivational speaker, which is when I worked with Demi Lovato and Macklemore and yada, yada, yada. And it was probably October that I got a little tipsy, I had some wine, I got a little tipsy and I, I worked up the courage to message him on Facebook and end our relationship. And we were long distance. So it wasn't like I was gonna drive eight hours. Well, I can't drive, so I was definitely not gonna drive eight hours, but I wasn't gonna drive eight hours to see him. He had no plans or availability to come see me. I was touring full time, building my career, traveling all over the world, and I regret not just giving him a phone call, but I think I was a coward, and I had never been in this situation before, and having a glass of wine just helped me to make the decision and do it, and I just, opened Facebook and I messaged him and I said, you know, I care about you so deeply and I'm so grateful that we met and I just don't feel like it's the right time in my life to pursue this, but you're gonna find an amazing girl and I don't want you to feel like like being born HIV positive has to change things for you. And he was really receptive. You know, he was totally understanding of me building my career and that that was my focus. And, you know, I didn't date anybody else for almost a year because I was just so focused on my career and what I was doing, but we didn't really talk after that. And I was his first kind of, we weren't even, it wasn't even a long relationship. It wasn't even officially a relationship, but like I was his first kind of girlfriend dating experience. And almost two years ago, I received a letter from him. He was now working at the conference. I wasn't working there that summer, but kind of our, my mentor, or the link between us who had kind of told me about him over the years. She was still working at the conference, he was working at the conference, and they would do this, these jackalope letters where you would write a letter to somebody who made an impact in your life. And she came home from the conference that summer, again, like a year and a half, two years later, and said, Michael wrote a letter for you and asked me to give it to you. And I was a coward. I thought he was going to be mad at me or upset. I was in a new relationship with Matt, who you guys, if you're an OG, you know all about Matt, but I was too scared to read this letter and I, I was gonna need somebody cited to read it to me. So I was just really scared. And he messaged me on Facebook to see if I'd read it and I ignored the message. This was a really cowardly time in my life, you guys. And eventually I brought the letter over to Matt, who was the closest person to me in my life and the person who I felt most comfortable reading this. And I, he knew the story, I told him all about it. And I said, you know, I know you won't judge me for what he might say about me or what he might think of me. And I want to read this, I want the person to read this to me to not judge me because there was so much judgment in my life around the decision to date him to begin with that I wanted to share this with somebody who wasn't gonna judge me or what he was gonna say about me or to me. So he read me the letter and in the letter he told me, oh my God, I'm gonna get emotional. I'm not gonna do this. I keep crying in videos lately. I don't know what it is, but he read me the letter and um, in the letter, Michael told me that I saved his life and that he had been really struggling with being suicidal for many years. And I had known that, I had known, I had known he was very depressed and had a lot of anger and pent up, built up emotion inside of him at the time that we were dating, but I didn't quite know how dark it got for him. And I had always shared openly with him my history of being suicidal and of dealing with situational depression in the hopes of sharing my journey of recovery and self-help and, and the tips and tricks that I'd used, hoping it would help him. And reading this letter and hearing that, you know, those two or three months that we were in contact had made such a positive impact on his life and his acceptance of himself and his forgiveness towards his mother and his hope 
that he could move forward and find love and find a healthy, happy relationship and find people who would accept him with open arms and who wouldn't treat him any different. He contributed to, to saving him and that was really incredible. And so I wanted to make this video for a few reasons because like I said at the beginning, I wanna I wanna hopefully help break some of that stigma down and, and link that information and, and hope that you guys empower yourselves and educate yourselves. But also I wanna remind you that you never know the impact you are having on somebody's life. And you never know how a simple thing that you think is just nothing could make the biggest world of a difference in somebody's life. So I just encourage you to live with compassion for others, to educate yourself on the diversity in this world and on different lived experiences. I encourage you to lead with your heart, to love openly, to be fearless, and to walk the journey of love and acceptance in life for yourself and for others. And that's really all. I know this was kind of a long one and I don't know, my, my mood was kind of like not, it was very, I feel like very calm in this video and very zen and I think it's because I think Michael's a very special person and he was a very special part of my life even though he was a very short part of my life. And I don't want to tell the story like, oh my God, I dated somebody with AIDS, like, or was born HIV positive. Like, I didn't want to make this, the story was not made for clickbait. The story was not made to be sensationalized. The story was made to help people. And so I'm trying to be calm and collected and share it with the right intention. And I hope that's come across. If you learned something new, give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you want to be updated next time I make a video. I hope you enjoyed it. Share your own experiences down below with dating, with self-love, with maybe dating somebody who people in your life didn't expect or didn't accept. And let's have some healthy discussions. Yeah, that's all I have for you today. If you want to watch another story time video, you can click this one right in the corner up here or this one over here. I love you guys so very much and I hope you have a beautiful, healthy, happy day. Bye.